Hello, N4H and H here. I want to talk about power line noise because I have a chance to show you some. Although I will say it's been minimized. I, I've had power line noise. Uh, it was back when I had a different radio. This radio has got a m more quiet receiver anyway, but I've had power line noise that was uh, well over S9. In fact, uh, at one time it was uh, 15 over 9 on certain bands. But I wanted you to hear, in case you ever wonder... Uh, you know, especially for new hams, what does power line, uh, power line noise sound like? That little grind you're hearing in there. Let me, let me turn up the volume a little bit. So you might just think that's what we call atmospheric noise. A lot of people call it that, a QRN. Um, but watch, I'm going to, I'm going to turn on my noise blanker. I'm not going to pan over there, but top right of the FTDX 5000 got a noise blanker see how it, the needle drops that'll give you the idea of what the difference in the power line noise is and when you knock it out now this radio has two levels of noise blanker so those of you who have a FT, FTDX 5000 or uh, some of the other radios that have uh, a wide band noise blanker and then also a just a regular noise blanker. If you look here in the screen, I'm going to turn noise blanker off, okay? There's regular noise blanker, wide band noise blanker. And the wide band noise blanker there uh, has some adjustments that you go into in the menu to set the level. And, um, you know how much you want it to function and also the width so um, that one is one that you will you know go into the menu and tailor as needed use it if well okay I'll give you the quick and dirty <clears throat> rather than getting too technical about it if that one doesn't work resort to the wideband noise blanker uh, you know, as implied, it kind of depends on how broad the noise is, what type of noise. I will tell you that noise blankers don't always knock this out. It can be bad enough that the noise blanker just can't deal with it or there's too much noise. Uh, because it's what it's trying to do is track those pulses and uh, knock them down. And um, I will admit, I think that older radios, uh, I know from the era of the 90s, had really good analog noise blankers that were they just worked some of the newer radios where they do the noise blanker let me turn down where they do the noise blanker in the dsp uh not so good actually this one i was surprised i was a little concerned about how good the noise blanker would work but it's uh it's not too bad uh definitely not too bad my old yesu ft920 and my yesu ft890 i still feel like probably have better noise blankers but um this one's not bad. It's knocking it out. It doesn't always, like I said, but see there? And that's the regular noise blanker. Now, there's also adjustment here for noise blanker level. What's this? See, I rotated it counterclockwise and the noise returned. And, and let me mention on, about that. You want to turn the noise blanker level up to the point where the noise drops no further because noise blankers uh, can affect your selectivity. In other words, uh, <clears throat> don't make this mistake. You've got your noise blanker turned up real high, and I will tell you the wideband noise blanker will, will definitely do this. you got your noise blanker turned up really high, and it's knocking the noise out, but you're hearing some, uh, you know, what's commonly called bleed over, okay? So you're hearing, let's say, six kilohertz away, you're hearing somebody uh, somebody's cue so i mean you're hearing that you know that honky sound and uh what you go and tune around and you go good grief they're six kilohertz away they're wide they're they're splattering you know they don't have the radio set up correctly well be very careful about jumping on somebody about that because when you run your noise blanker at a high level it will uh it will degrade the selectivity of your receiver and it will actually uh, allow in the uh the signal that's six kilohertz away so before you go jumping on somebody and telling them that they're too wide and of course you really want to avoid doing that anyway um turn off the noise blanker briefly and see if it goes away chances are 
your noise blanker is what was causing that. Another thing about noise blanker, especially the modern ones, and this is the case with the FTDX 5000 even, if you run the noise blanker, especially the wide noise blanker at a high level, um, it's going to, um, it, may, it can, and it usually does, make strong signals sound distorted. Um, you know, the best way I can describe it, it's, it almost sounds like they're clearing their throat when they talk or, or like they're gargling or something. Well, more like they're clearing their throat. So, uh, again, that is the nature of the noise blanker. So, you know, rule of thumb is try to get the noise taken care of at the source. Use the noise blanker only as a, a last resort until you can deal with the noise at the source. Now, fortunately for me, uh, and let me let me advise you the same. Be very nice to your power company. They are obligated to come out anytime there's a report of RFI, radio frequency interference, and and take a look at it. And they have sophisticated equipment that allows them to check even every nut, every bolt. It, by the way, it is almost never a transformer. In fact, a transformer uh, should actually help against noise. But it's usually loose hardware or... Uh, old um, insulators, the older type of insulators, um, a lot of times it's just loose nuts and bolts. And it's going to be worse when the air is dry than it will be when the air is damp. So um, those are indicators that is power line noise, uh, you know, just so you know. Uh, when the air is damp, what happens is the static discharge doesn't build up as high before it goes ahead and, and discharges. When you've got very dry air, the uh, the air is less conductive, so the the static charge buildup has to get to a higher voltage before it'll bleed off, and it's that bleed off that you're hearing. So I wanted you to hear this because power company, uh, my power company, Georgia Power, they're they're incredible at taking care of this. Um, they sent their engineer out yesterday. He uh, checked f the poles. He found four. Uh, problematic areas, uh, a lot of older hardware in my neighborhood. Now, they've already replaced a lot, and those that they've replaced have done well. Um, so these are some new ones. Uh, they can't just go and indiscriminately replace everything all at once, so only when there's a problem. And so he found four more poles with some uh, loose hardware, but also some old insulators that they're going to replace with a polymer type. Uh, oh, and I also should mention that when the lightning arresters get blown, it can create noise. And I've had a situation where two lightning arresters were blown uh, down just not far from here. And then yesterday he told me there was another one blown. And so basically, it's just, just remember this, it's almost never the transformer. It's usually some type of hardware on the pole that is causing uh, the noise as the static builds up and then it discharges. It's just trying to find another potential to jump to. Uh, you know, the, 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 your uh, electrons uh, are looking for another uh, uh, atom where there's a space for them to go to at a different potential. So that's what's happening is building up and discharging. But I want you to just, you know, know that about uh, power line noise. Let me turn the noise blinker off. So there it is. That's not nearly as bad as it's been, but they're going to take care of it, and I'm uh, I'm much appreciative for that. So anyway, I, didn't, I know it's kind of a weird video talking about noise blankers, but uh, again, my channel is dedicated to uh, you know operating procedures, and uh, and I I try also to uh, make sure that I work in things that maybe people who are new to the hobby can. Um, can learn from so uh, there you have it on noise blankers use them if you have to try to avoid it uh, if you can try to attack the noise at the source and uh, run the noise blanker only at the level that you actually need it to knock the noise down and do realize that not every bit of noise can be knocked down and I guess it's only fair to mention too that sometimes the noise is not a power line that's why I wanted you to hear this um, there's other different, different types of noise, uh, especially ones that are really gnarly and broad. Um, and if you have a scope, you'll see them. You can see this noise, those little bitty tiny spikes in there. If you see the little tiny spikes, but things like, um, I've had everything from, you know, LED lights that you buy that might be made in China. They have a cheap, uh, uh, power converter in them. I've had, um, uh, Wireless phone chargers cause noise, 
fish tank lamp, the little wall wart power supply. Definitely watch out for wall warts. <laughs> Uh, they're not all made the same, I tell you. Um, and I, and you know, and I hate to say this, but generally, if you if it's made in China, you you're got you got maybe a 50 50 chance that it's not going to be a problem for your shack. So um, let's see what else have I I've had noise out of? Oh, a baby rocker. You know the the thing you put the baby in and you turn it on, and it'll rock the baby for you. Power supply again. It was a wall wart. And, um, it would, no, it wasn't a wall ward. It was an inline. It was an inline, but still similar concept. Um, it was creating a bunch of noise. So you just have to, you know, isolate the noise, make sure it's not coming from something in your house. Um, another thing can do it is LED, the under, under the, uh, counter LEDs. Um, power, power guy told me about that yesterday. He's encountered that one. So just, just be mindful of that. Um, it's it's really irritating. I know when you get your HF rig all all put together, you got your antenna up, and you're getting here, you're know, excited to start using it, and you can't hear weak signals because of you know that much noise. So uh, I just wanted to cover that with you and give you a little bit of insight into uh, dealing with noise. Oh, and I should mention one of the ways you can isolate to know for sure whether the noise is coming from something in your house or is external like a power line it could even be the neighbor's plasma tv if they have still have one um you know other external sources is and i know this sounds drastic but get a battery run your radio on the battery turn off your main breaker in your house yes it's, you're gonna have to reset your clocks but that then powers down your house and so if it was a led bulb a phone charger or some wall wart um then the, then the noise will go away. So then you know, don't call the power company, don't bug them, it's something inside your house. But if the noise is still there, then yes, in all likelihood, it is loose hardware on a power line or par perhaps uh, something that your neighbor's doing. Um, oh, another, in fact, if your neighbor's got a garden uh, or a, uh, what do you call those things? You know, the I'm drawing a blank on what they're called, but you know, where they have plants inside of a building that's got, um, you know, it looks kind of like a tent. I'm trying, I can't, I can't remember the name of those things, but they're, they have glow lamps and things like that for the plants. That's also a biggie that'll get you. All right. Hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreons who helped me keep this channel going. www.patreon.com slash N4 H and H. Uh, and, hey, please click the subscribe button. That helps the channel out a whole, whole lot as well. All right. Uh, 73 from N4 H&H. &H.